Hey there, Boots Owen here. This is my Solic Diverter, produced by Earthwise. Earthwise Products Limited. It's disconnected from the mains at the moment. I've posted a number of videos, I'd say about three videos of this. Sometimes working, sometimes not. Pondering about it. It appeared occasionally to take power from the grid. And I did various measurements and kept an eye on my meters and since I've installed the Victron, which I never intended it to work with, but since I installed the Victron afterwards, then I was able to see what was going on a bit better with power in that. Screw here, pop the front off, slide it to the right. So I didn't think it worked right in the, in the start, and uh, made a video about that, tried to figure out what was going on, asking the usual channel contributors what was going on, I guess. And... Only about 400 people have seen it, I think. But one of them was a person who I think is the MD or somebody in Solic. And they've asked, would I like it to be repaired? Now, it could have been a warranty repair anyways, because it's only six months old. But, uh, well, I've said, yeah, sure, might as well now. It's not a grommet. What's going on there? I don't want to get that. I'll just push the whole grommet out. So I'm taking it apart to put it back to Solic and it will get a firmware upgrade. It'll get a firmware upgrade somewhere on this board, presumably the chip in the center. And that should make it work again. And while he, we had a good chat about it, and while he made no promises, he said it may well work now with the Victron as well. Uh, they set the parameters slightly differently to before, so it comes on I don't know actually, I don't want to go out and say say what it does when I'm not 100% sure, but uh, it should err on the side of caution I think, and hover a bit on the, what I would call the safe side, the, uh, you know, it would give a little bit to the grid rather than take a bit from the grid, so let's see then, so right now I'm just disconnecting it, that's all I'm doing here, in order, to send it back and I'll come back and reinstall it and we'll test it again and see how we get on with it so stay tuned so a number of days have passed and the Solic has been returned to me I sent it off in the mail and in fairness it arrived to him uh, I think I think he's a director at Earthwise um, I don't know anything about Earthwise good or bad so I'm not really saying anything bad about them yet until we fi figure out if this thing works um but it, it arrived yesterday because i was able to check the tracking and tracking on the post and uh it's in the, it's arrived today so he must have posted it yesterday it arrived this morning so it arrived yesterday down in the middle of england and it's been returned Already, where's my screw hole? So it's been, I don't know, is it reflashed, reprogrammed, some word like that. Uh, there's no hardware changes, it's the same box, it isn't a, a, a swapped unit because it has my name on the back, although that, like they may have replaced the board, but I don't think so because it's got my, um, I don't think it's replaced. I was told it was going to be reprogrammed and I believe that's what's happened. So I think the reprogramming will delay the start up a bit and get it to work with the Victron that's here beside me. So there's my CT clamp. Let's put that in first. Okay, let's tuck that in behind and plug it in up here where it goes. In there. All right, then let's follow the path of the cables. So first of all, we've got an earth at the bottom here. So I'll put a curly whirly on that and screw this a bit. Get this in here. Live supply is here. Neutral load is in here. There's a pretty good wiring diagram on the back of it. All here. Okay. Clips have broken there. I guess they didn't like being screwed in. It should be a matter of covering it up and then commissioning it again. 
So the co I've left off the boost button. There should be a boost button that fits into this hole here. And I don't want it. So flip that over, snap it on. There's a screw that goes in the side. So at the moment, at the moment we're exporting. So let's try and get all of these together here in an image. At the moment, this red light means we're exporting. This meter here means we're exporting if it's flashing. It means it's importing if it's gone constant. Let's plug in a load and this should start flashing. So we'll put on a couple of kilowatts and turn it on. Now there may be too much solar. So what I can do is on this guy here, I can see I need to put on even more of a load. There's too much sun outside. Let's just see how much sun there is on this one here. 3.6 amps, that's not much. There, it's changed over now. So the load balancing with the sun. So it's, what that means is it's definitely importing at the moment and that's how we commission the solic so let's turn on the solic it's on a dedicated um, miniature circuit breaker and that lights flashing only a bit though but you see the mains lights come on up here and i'll leave that for a few seconds i can't remember how long and so we're still importing you can see down here so the immersion element is turned on. I'll go through this commissioning list. Ensure the water in the immersion tank requires heating. Yes, it does. Ensure that we're drawing 200 watts, which is about one amp. I don't know, we're about there. It's only 0 0.7, 0 0.8. I need to really put a bit of a heavier load on it. Let's get something else on it. Put another heater on it. Okay, let's check it again. Make sure we're doing it right. So there's four amps coming into the property, 3.8. So we're definitely on the right side for commissioning. Turn off the inverter. Hmm, I don't really want to do that, but I guess I have to. So on the fuse board down here is the solar inverter. Turn them all off, this is going to confuse everyone. Okay, so that should jump up. It is a bit. 8 amps, not much, so we're only taking in a couple of amps, I can't remember what it was a minute ago. Turn off the inverter, allow 20 seconds for calibration. Uh, it says turn on immersion circuit breaker, so I've turned on the solic too early, I think. So I better turn it off again and start again. Right. Ensure water in the immersion tank requires heating. Done that. Ensure the house is drawing at least 200 watts, so let's draw in 7.5 amps, so that's okay. Ensure that the immersion element is turned on. It is, it's turned on. Turn off the solar inverter, done that. Turn on the immersion circuit breaker, so that's the one for the solic. Let's turn on the solic again. It's meant to be on the immersion circuit breaker, which it is. So it's doing its calibration up here. The mains light should be green and sensor light should be red in a moment. So mains light should be green and the sensor light should be red. There's a fault finding or a troubleshooting there. Turn on the solar inverter and wait three minutes. So solar inverter back on. It will take, I don't know, some of them, some of them are coming up and some aren't. So we've got seven point, we've got eight, eight, eight amps coming in there to the house at the moment because of those heaters. We've got zero on solar so far. So when that, when this one comes up, above zero we might be good to go here's one inverter clicking on so one inverter's coming on we're up to half an amp there isn't much sun it's the middle of january the end of january today and then we need to check that the lights are shown correctly so what i'll do is it doesn't say to turn off well it doesn't it says it's sure we're drawing 200 watts and then turn on the solar so i can start removing those loads i believe that's one off where does that leave me? We're still drawing in power, I'd say. We're up to three amps on the solar. 
there might be other stuff on in the house. In fact, I'm sure there is. So what are we doing on the house? Um, two, 1.9 coming in. So I'll turn off the other heater. And that goes to 1.9 still, presumably going out now. It's flipped over because this light here has gone red. Sensor and immersion are on, which is all positive. The humming noise is coming from a meter down below, which I'll show you now. So let's just see what the solar is doing. 3.4 there, 3.6. So we're getting um, 800, 900 watts of solar on the mains. This is the bit that always confused me before. It's showing three amps on the mains feed, 2.9 amps on the mains feed. But given that this light's red and this light's red, I would say we're in equilibrium. Now I can hear a hum coming from, I think, the Victron. I can see the wheel turning. I can see the wheel turning over here on the meter to the immersion. So let's see what we're giving to the immersion. You can't see it, but we're putting three and a half amps, 3.7 amps into the immersion tank. 3.6, what's the solar doing? 3.6, 3.7, 3 so very similar. You can hear the inverter to the left coming on, but I've no way of checking the current on that without, um, I haven't got a DC clamp meter, I've only got an AC clamp meter doesn't really mean very much but the real test here I think for me is that this light's red and that this light's flashing very gently or mostly red so if I try to recall what I was told and I'll try and confirm this as well and maybe I'll do an update video or an update to this video at the end they've changed the delay so it takes 20 seconds for the immersion to kick in and they've also and they've also biased it that it should leak out a few watts maybe 20 watts or something like that so it should leak out to the grid so it should favor a slight export so that there's no risk of a slight import i think that's what i was told on the phone but it was um i was part of a phone call and that's just the bit i remember i think that's right but i'm happy to be corrected in the comments but it seems it seems like i'm pleased with it the other update was that because of the way it's reconfigured it's not like the Solix, I think, before the summer of 2023. There was a software change in the summer of 2023, so now it should work with the Victron over here. So the Victron should get the power first, and then the Solix should pick up the background. And on the basis that I can hear the Victron doing something, we can hear it doing something that stopped again, because the batteries are full. I can see the meter wheel here spinning very gently and I can see the two red lights on my two meters up above, both constant red. It looks like it's working now, which is excellent. So let's go up and have a look at it on the computer. So right now, this is what I can see on my Victron remote monitoring, which has a meter reading the power coming from the PV on a clamp meter. It has a meter reading the power coming or going to the grid then it kind of infers from what it's using. It can tell what it's using itself. It can see that it's using zero watts to charge, but it always seems to rob a few watts, like up to 20 watts. The fact that we're hovering at nine watts and three watts there seems good to me. So I made a little note of what changes had been made to the Victron system. It delays start up 10 to 15 seconds. It increases power eight times slower than it did before, and it runs between zero and 3% of the threshold. That's the notes I made. So. I guess that makes sense. So it um, it's the 10 to 15 seconds thing that I think helps it interact with the Victron, helps the Solic interact with the Victron, and it increases power eight times slower. So it ramps up much slower than before. And I guess it ramps down just as quickly. I don't know. I'd love to know in the comments, but I think these are probably proprietary secrets of the um, of the product. Not secrets, but you know, they're the, the method, working methods. I don't know that they're IPR. I, I don't know is the short answer. Uh, that's intellectual property rights of the thing, but that's what I was told 
on, on the phone with no caveats. So, and if it runs zero to 3% of the threshold, so then we're running, well, 14 watts import now, 10 watts. I wouldn't be too worried about that kind of level. And the other thing I'd say is that I, I didn't have great faith in the meters that Victron supplied. So the clamp meter, it, it's, it's either the inverters are all wrong or the clamp meter's wrong, or my clamp on ammeter is also wrong, potentially. But like I said downstairs, the acid test is whether the lights are on on the meters. If the light is on on the main incoming meter to the house, it means I'm not paying for electricity. And that for me is the acid test. So there you go. It looks like a bit of success here with Solic and the Earthwise Solic 200. Uh, I paid £215 for that unit last summer. So that's six or seven or eight months ago, that kind of time. Fitted it last summer. And you'll see in the previous three videos about it. Sometimes it works and sometimes it didn't. And it looks like that was down to a software issue that wasn't resolved before it was shipped out. So I got a Dodge unit, I suspect, and Solic contacted me and mended it, which is a win. It's drawn 18 watts at the moment. Um, now it's exporting 33. That could be a function of it interacting with the Victron and the fact that it's moving a lot slower than it used to responding to loads. If it's moving eight times slower than it used to, well, as long as it's around six watts or that kind of level, I don't really care very much. That's a success as far as I'm concerned. So that feels like a positive outcome for me. It seems to be working just fine now and interacting. I'll, I'll know better on a sunny day when the batteries are empty, whether it interacts properly with the Victron. There was no promises that it would, and I never expected it to when I bought it. I bought it before I had the Victron, so that's a separate issue. So when I found it not working properly, the Victron wasn't installed, so that's a different issue altogether but now it should interact with the Victron and that's updated on the internet on some of the sales websites, which is a positive thing. You can see this meter going around slowly. I'll take a photograph of that now, as soon as I sign off the video and come back later and check it again and see how much has gone in today, see how much it's diverted, because I won't be able to see that through the VRM, the Victron software. I'll just see it as consumption within the home, which is fine. I'll be able to use my own spreadsheet to work these things out. All in all, from Earthwise and Solic, I think it's a positive outcome. I guess I could have been pro more proactive in returning the item sooner, and I have no experience of actually trying to return it other than they contacted me, so I returned it that way. But the reason I wasn't proactive about it is because I never thought it would work with the Victron, and I'd kind of signed off on it as a bit of a mystery issue, and I always thought it was a, an issue. Could have been with my installation. I never, I never suspected it would have been a firmware update or a reconfiguration like that, but it seems like a success overall, so... There you go. Questions or comments, leave them below. If you have any experience with Solic um, and any of the issues, I would say get in touch with Solic. One commenter previously suggested that they didn't get a response at all. So maybe that's true, maybe it's not. Um, it's hearsay as far as the comments are concerned, but it is the experience of the person who left the comment, presumably. So that's all we can refer to. Otherwise, tell me your experience. And uh, I'd say a lot of people have had a lot of success with these things over the years, uh, but there's always a few outliers, I guess, and just happens to be someone who's on YouTube. Thanks for watching. See you later.